Hi, my name is Hannah Bethel, and I'm a country music artist and songwriter. Welcome to CRX. Thank you. Although it's been going for a couple of days now. <laughs> a bit of circus. The reason you're attending this year is to talk about your new album, Never Ending Sky. Mm -hmm. And I noticed in the press material it says, the thing that I always love seeing is that you wrote every song on it. What were you saying with the record? What was sort of the theme of the album for you? Well, this record is um, comprised of songs that I've written over the last probably three years. So it's a, it's a big chunk of my life that's getting covered in these songs. Um, I went through a major breakup. I went through touring most of the country and um, just a lot of, of, of big things happened in my life that are kind of reflected in these songs and um, with this record I really wanted to make a really different record. My past records, this is my fourth one, um, my past records have been very organic and very acoustic driven and this um, record really plays with electric guitars more and steel guitars and using different tones, different amplifiers um, to try and just get a really unique sound. And um, we also recorded this record in a way that I have never worked before in that we um, recorded everything from the ground up. We tracked drums and then we tracked bass and kind of layered everything oh, okay. separately instead of like a studio setting so that was really cool because we were really able to kind of nitpick and make it perfect so I'm type A and I like things to be perfect so that was really fun for me to just be really really careful about every little line on the record. What were the elements that came together for you? What was it about your life or where you are right now as a songwriter and an artist that made that record now possible? Whether you may have not been able to do this two records. Ago. Yeah, totally. Well, I, I find um, I've been in Nashville for about six years now. Um, I've been singing and playing all my life. Um, I think I started kind of traveling and playing when I was 14 or 15. So I've been doing this for a while. And um, I just find that the older... I get the less I care about what people think and the more I prioritize what I want and need and the kind of music that I want to make, um, you know, regardless of, you know, trying to meet a, a quota or whatever. So that just kind of coming into myself some more um, made this record possible. That's an interesting idea, and it's something that often comes up, and it comes up much more so, not exclusively, but much more so with female artists than with male artists. The mm -hmm. idea of you need sometimes even a couple of albums to, to mm -hmm. find who you really are as an artist. Um, to what do you attribute that sort of extended learning period where you find your feet? Um, for me, it's just been writing my butt off. Like, I have been writing for a long time and working constantly to become a better writer. I, I know some writers that have like their first song is like amazing and at five songs later it's like a hit. It's like I was not like that as a writer. When I first started writing when I was 14 my songs were like hippy dippy moon and stars like GCD like you know I wasn't a good writer when I started. I really had to work at it to um, you know hone my craft and kind of figure out how to write a song that people want to listen to. So for me, it's just been um, kind of nose to the grindstone, working really hard to, to get it where I want it. Yeah, yeah. The new song, new single is going to be You Want to Be My Man. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about that song. The, what was the very first, the birthplace of that song? What was that very first idea that ended up being this whole song? Mm -hmm. This song has a cool story, actually. Um, it was about a week before we were going to go into the studio to, to record this record, and um, we weren't going to add any more songs. And um, one evening, David Meyer and I, who I wrote this song with, were kind of sitting on the couch drinking wine, and he starts playing this riff on his guitar and I was like oh that's kind of cool so I turn on the recorder and I just kind of start humming a melody and um, then we were like yeah we've had a lot of wine let's not write this tonight so we came back to it the next day and we're like wow this is a really cool idea and um, the cool thing about this song is that 
the melody that you hear on the record is the same melody that I sang the first time through as I was just making it up. And and usually, you know, you kind of rewrite songs and change to make it better, but this just stayed the same as it came out of us. So that's really special about this song. And as soon as we finished it, I was like, we have to put this on the record. And now it's the first single, so it's, it's pretty exciting. That is cool. And if, it's a story I've heard more than once and not mm-hmm. just from newer artists but even from very established artists they go the record's finished people everybody yeah we have our 12 songs and then this idea mm-hmm, mm-hmm. do you think it's because you thought the record was finished the pressure is off and then you're much more free to write to write something is that maybe you know i don't know i actually have have talked about this a couple times today in other interviews but i think that's just kind of the outlook you have to have on life is you make plans and you you know set things up to go this way but you always got to leave room for the random stuff that pops up because if you don't you know then it's no fun so you gotta when stuff comes along you gotta you know let it in especially as an artist you know you gotta be ready to like roll with whatever comes at you yeah i think it's i think that's a very healthy attitude to have in life as well where you Yes, of course. You want to make some plans. You want to have a have an idea. Right. Of yes, you should have goals go. and. <laughs> but to leave room for, you know, serendipity. To leave yeah. room for the random events that completely shape. Totally. Change. How is that? How do you see the music industry in that sense? Because more, I mean, it's like acting and anything. It's so volatile. All mm-hmm. the time. Totally. I mean. Um, I know, you know, in in music in recent years, it's been very male-dominated. It's been um, very dominated by the the broke country music, which I I think is, you know, cool music. I don't mind it, but I was bummed that there wasn't other kinds of country music being played as well. And, you know, I was getting to the point where I was talking with my team, and they're like, you know, should we try and go more of this route to try and match what's going on? (laughs) And you know, and I'm, and it's, and it's, it's hard because as a woman, every time I go into a label or publisher or booking agency meeting, the first thing that they say to me before they even hear my music, like 99% of the time, is, "Hey, nice to meet you. We don't, we're not looking to sign any new women right now. Women aren't selling," and it can be really hard, you know, when you don't even know what I do yet. And um, even though I'm, I'm, I'm pretty strong-willed and have pretty tough skin but if you hear that like 50 times in a year it's like man maybe girls really can't do it right now but you know um this crs week has actually been really encouraging because i'm seeing um country music gravitate more towards the song again and just a really well-crafted song and it doesn't matter if it's a little poppy or a little rock or whatever because country music has always been a great culmination of rock and gospel and bluegrass and all these you know different styles of music come together to make country but it's I've been hearing just a lot of really good songs and it makes me really excited. <laughs> I'm glad you said that because I've, I've been saying this for you know a year and a half now and, and the cynics, you can split your friends up in the cynics and the dreamers. And oh yeah. The cynics are all going, but I don't think it's going to change and it all sucks and it's bad and I don't think it is and I think it is shifting and I've seen it shift yeah. very slowly from like going to the writer's rounds and people are starting to play the meaningful songs again. They're not all sitting, it's not one truck song after another anymore which it was for years yeah and because they're all trying to get signed and that's what's on the radio so let's sit in writers rounds playing that to impress the publisher who might be there and they're again going for the more meaningful more songs Mm -hmm. of substance I think that's partly because you can only have that superficial going on for that long a time before you again hunger for real and authentic. Totally. And I think, um, I mean, fun songs are fun. Everyone needs, you know, lighthearted stuff to kind of relieve them from daily stresses and everything that all, all of us are juggling. But I think, especially at this time in the world, people are craving something hopeful and and truthful to hold on to and um i think it's cool i mean in the history of the whole world people have always looked to the musicians and the poets for kind of that light and i think as as artists we have a really cool um job and responsibility and opportunity to be that light for people yeah and i think the 
concept is something I've been talking to people about. What is it that you think that a song can achieve that you almost can't really do with any other form of language? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the, the possibilities are really limitless. Um, I mean, look at the Beatles coming to the U.S. like right after Kennedy's assassination. And... Um, I mean, just stuff like that, where music has been such a light when, you know, people really needed it. And, and it really is the only thing that can do that. Like, sports are cool, but sports can't do that, you know. Even to a certain extent, politicians can't do that. So, um, I mean, as I said before, I just think um, musicians just have a, a really big responsibility to you know, kind of guide people and, and hopefully a good way, you know? Yeah, and be, because you have like, you know, the Bob Dylans of the world yeah. who comment on social issues and mm -hmm. almost try to affect social change, but we also need the, you know, Luke Bryans who make people feel Totally, kind of you totally do, yeah, every, every piece is important, um, but I, I think it's important to, to let all of it come through and not just one one channel you know yeah, you need not only that you need all of us <laughs> but I think it's, it's when you look at the the singles that are being put out I mean when you look at just say one artist like Carrie Underwood she had something in the water the next song yeah this is little toy gun these are both very heavy mm -hmm. songs they're mm -hmm. both fantastic and yeah if this wouldn't have happened a year ago yeah they would have been afraid to follow up a heavy song with another heavy song. Totally. And the fact that that's happening on a female artist, I think, is nothing but good news. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. And I and even um, at the showcases here at CRS, there there's more women than there was last year, and last year there was more women than there was the year before. So that's that makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can't keep us down. I mean, and I I'm not really a feminist. I don't like to like think like girls, boys, Venus, Mars. I'm more like a humanist. Like you know, we're all in this together. We really are, and you need um, both sides of the spectrum to I think to kind of satisfy an audience yeah definitely mm -hmm. I have been finishing up with this question which have, has gotten some really cool reactions <laughs> which songs would you put on the soundtrack to your life oh, of other people's songs yeah because I know it's hard oh, as a song man. you write your own soundtrack but right other songs that are out there that connect with you that represent a certain part of you oh my gosh that's such a hard question yeah, I, I don't even know how Holy I would cow. answer it, so I apologize. <laughs> Wait, let me think for a minute. I'm trying to, I mean, I have so many songs that I'm like, and I, I definitely gravitate towards um, the love songs. I'm a hopeless romantic. Um, one of my favorite songs that I've been listening to lately is a, a song that Willie Nelson does um, called The Last Thing I Needed, First Thing This Morning. And um, it's just totally a romantic song and like just tragically beautiful. That would be on my list. Um, definitely something like Toby Keith and Patriotic. I always loved his patriotic stuff. And that's something that I miss in, in country music is, you know, being, you know, proud of the great country that we live in. I feel like it's kind of tapered off a little bit. It needs to come make a comeback <laughs> yeah yeah girl well and I'm working on it I mean it's so funny as soon as I release this record I'm like okay I have all the songs written for the next record like because you know you're always kind of out writing yourself but <laughs> very cool thank you so much yeah thank you